been a startup then, I think so, but we moved on to media and uh, hospitality and a lot of other things. So it's a great experience being part of Thai Bhubaneswar and uh, connecting with uh, investors and startups. So this afternoon we'll be discussing about uh, insights in the investment and funding landscape. So that is a very, very big area and thankfully we've got some very, very eminent speakers here from different uh, uh, spaces and fields and domains in the entrepreneurial landscape and uh, we are fortunate to have uh, Madam Vandana Srivastava, Director STPI Guwahati, a big hand for her. And of course, uh, Mr. Manish uh, Srivastava, Founding Partner and Director, Alpha Value Consulting. Um, we are awaiting Mr. Debu Patnaik, who is uh, the former president of uh, Thai Bhubanesha and presently the co-founder of Bhubanesha Angels Thai. And of course, on my left is, uh, and, uh, and we are just discussing, it's a small world. We have been, I mean, friends uh, since uh, days from Katak and school. Satyakam Mahanti. And only when I read his resume, I, I just realized how big a guy he is. <laughs> And of course, uh, we'll be hopefully having Nishita. Okay, Nishita is here. Please, please come up on stage. Nishita, again, I've been seeing her for, uh, I think, when she was in school. But she's come a, such a long way and such an inspiration for uh, all young people. Uh, so as and when we have Mr. Debuhai, we'll, of course, uh, introduce uh, him. I would uh, start off with uh, a brief introduction of Satyakam, and then he'll take it up. And of course, he would have more to say about himself and his journey. But this is what has been given to me, and it's very interesting and quite elaborate. Uh, Satika Mahanti is the founder and uh, managing director, uh, WYSERZ20. Wiser, okay, it's Wiser. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's how we go. Satyakam is founder and managing partner at Wiser, an idea stage fund backed by the Hatchery program. The fund is focused on accelerating entrepreneurial success of tech AI startups from idea to PMF stage or the startup journey. You need to tell me what PMF is, okay? So I am here as a moderator, but I want to learn also. He has been a successful entrepreneur and corporate leader with more than 22 years of business experience in global companies as General Electric, Genpact, and LTI Mindtree. In 2012, Satyakam successfully founded Limbic, one of India's first AI product companies. The name of Sid sounds so interesting. He has been an active angel investor in more than 15 startups and an advisor and mentor to several of them. He is the co-author of Wiley Innovation Black Book Enterprise 4.0 and has sat on the academic advisory board of two leading universities in India. So that's Satyakam Mahanti for you, a big hand for our panelists here. So Satyakam, we would uh, start off with you and you had such an experience in a short while. So you've been an entrepreneur, you have been a startup founder, you have been an investor. So coming back to Odisha, your home state, how does it feel? And what would you tell at the outset to this uh, amazing, eclectic, uh, we welcome Shridebu Patnaik uh, to the panel. Um, what would you advise to start off about how to go about, not only for startups, for people who are already into the business of entrepreneurship for the last few years, they want to scale up. So let's start up with the startups first. Thank you. That was a very generous introduction. And good to see you again. Um, so there's two things I think I'll, I'll touch upon. The first is a little bit on the philosophy of uh, funding itself, right? And, I'm, and, and before I get into that, I'm going to not wear the investor hat here. I'm going to wear the operator, uh, the entrepreneur hat here, which is where I come from principally. And I will tell you one of the things that in recent years we've seen a lot of is um, for the lack of a better word, a craze for funding. It's like you haven't made it as a startup unless you have, uh, you know, somebody's cut you a check, right? It's, it seems to be front and center. Uh, almost as important, in some cases, more important than building your business. So I want to start with that part, right? Because um, building a business is a 20-year journey. No investor is going to last with you that long. So the investor cannot be, you know, the, the, the center, the person front and center for you. It has to be your customer, who you're building for, what you're building. Now, if I were to bring it back to 
what that means in funding terms, there are many ways to go about it. You can bootstrap it. You can, uh, you know, um, there's no better way to build a business than through your own revenue, right? Now, having said that, uh, all businesses or most businesses need capital in some form or another. So then you got to look at saying, how do you want to take it? Who do you want to take it from? It's very important. There are many players in the ecosystem, right? I will, I will touch upon the, uh, the idea stage, the earliest stage, idea pre-seed, seed stage, right? which is where I suspect most of us are in this room. And if you look at that uh, stage, your options are you can go to angels, you can go to angel networks, you can go to VCs, um, and, you know, and there's a ton of government grants actually, right, that uh, we've been hearing a lot. Yeah, so, you know, what is the path you take is a factor of the kind of business you're building, the space you're building in, the trajectory you need for that business to succeed, right? Like D2C businesses and enterprise businesses have fundamentally different trajectories. They have a different um, way to go to market, right? A different way to scale. So, long story short, because I'll, keep, I'll hog the entire panel discussion otherwise, um, be clear about what you want uh, in terms of funding, who you want it from, not just for the sake of um, having, you know, a check cut paid, right? That's one. The second thing um, is that, uh, that I want to tell you is where the world is at today. Today, India sits and Indian investors, institutional investors and VCs, sit on a bigger, uh, I mean, they haven't sat on a bigger pile of cash than before today, right? And we've been hearing terms like funding winter and all of that, right? Uh, some of it is real. Deals have slowed down. So today, I think the deals this year is probably a third of what they were at their peak, right? Or, or um, you know, so there is definitely a drop. But the interesting thing, if you get into the numbers, the individual checks are more than 2x, which means what is happening is that invest it's not that money is dried up. Money is there. But investors are becoming more discerning. They're looking for founders who are bringing true value. And they're willing to cut them a 2x larger check for it. Right? So, and I'll tie this back to my first point, that think about the kind of business you're building, the way you want to build it, right? And your funding journey will follow from that. Thank you, Satyakam. Uh, we'll come back to you again. But just on a lighter note, do you think funding winter is the right phrase for a place like Odessa where, where we look forward to the winter here? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, uh, so we are excellently placed here. And why I say that is, you know, when you have an evolved ecosystem, there's already a lot of money flowing in. So anytime you hit a drop, then you hear these terms. Here we are just starting up. You know, the world is our oyster. So you're right. You know, the, the term is probably not applicable, yeah, <laughs> um, you know, from, from that sense. But in the larger perspective, because once you get off your uh, pre-seed and your, uh, you know, uh, your early stage, you will compete in the global, you know, funding pond. So then it's important for you to put that perspective. And thank you. I'll, uh, um, we'll talk about... Uh, the nav navigating the landscape here in investment and funding. Of course, we have Mr. Devashish uh, Patnaik, who has been an entrepreneur for quite a bit of time, and he has uh, been a pioneer in many spaces, especially in hospitality. And I don't know how many of you know about it. If you are from Odisha, of course, you've heard of the brand Dalma, which is a chain of restaurants, and uh, that has taken Odia cuisine uh, to a global level. And people from outside who have come here, if you have the time, do visit the place. Uh, Debu Bhai, Debu Patnaik is the founder of this chain of restaurants. Other than a lot of other hospitality spaces, he has been a charter member of uh, Thai Bhubaneswar, president of uh, Thai Bhubaneswar. And of course, now he is uh, moving ahead the Thai uh, Bhubaneswar Angels and has, uh, of course, incubated uh, and uh, 
I mean, invested in a lot of startups before people started investing in startups in Odisha quite, quite a few years back. So I would uh, ask uh, Mr. Devashish Patnaik his, uh, the challenges which he has faced as an investor and as an entrepreneur in getting and giving funding. And what would you think uh, you would look for as an investor in startups, especially in Odisha? Good evening. <clears throat> Thank you, Sanu, for a generous uh, introduction. But uh, coming back to startup, honestly speaking, I probably 2010, 11, I even don't know what is a startup. The concept, the word, I really didn't know. It was a chance uh, meeting in Silicon Valley, uh, way back in 2010 probably, we were part of a, I come from a hospitality industry, mostly hotels, restaurants and all these things, so I don't understand much of tech. But uh, I was part of this uh, government delegation where one fine morning they said that you come and meet the Indian diaspora who wants to talk to you about Thai. So then we had a discussion and then they offered us to initiate the Thai chapter in Bhubaneswar. And that's how our journey into the startup uh, ecosystem started. My journey started. And uh, 2012-2013, there were two, three boys, young boys from KIT. They said that we are doing something, we want funding and you become the seed investor. I didn't know what the seed investor is those days, but the boys look quite innocent. So. Me and one of my friends, we thought that we will invest in this enterprise. We did that. The company went on to become one of the leading startups in the country in the name of Farai. And uh, then probably, cutting the story short, I got involved in startup ecosystem in Odisha and started investing in other startups also. See, coming back to your question, it's really difficult for a person like me who doesn't know almost all the startups and their products. You know, I am not saying about myself basically because I have been in this track for so many years and I know most of them now in Odisha. But <clears throat> for a common man and who really wants to invest, he, I was told in the morning session that the success rate is roughly around 10% of all startups. But the general investor in a state like Odisha is probably looking Kitna interest milega muche. How much that I am going to get every month? Are you paying me the interest? And which year are you going to return me the money? But in an investment, in a startup investment, as has been said in the morning, 90% goes dead. So you have to wait for that 10% to succeed. So you have to invest in 10 different startups for one to succeed. And you should know that nine are going to close and or probably vanish, which has happened to me also. Couple of them have vanished. So understanding the requirement and and the young boys that they come to you, they are talking in millions. 
but basic requirement is probably thousands. So you have not only have to decide how how big would be your ticket size and what would be the installments like? What would be the time frame that you would be investing in? I am real as a you know after the tie we have come decided to start this Bhuvneshwar Angels where we are trying to activate the HNIs across the state, trying to bring them on board as investors for the because we have probably around 2,000, correct me wrong, 1,800 or 1,600 or 1,800 startups now in the state which requires funding at some stage or other. So we are trying to activate the HNIs from different parts of the state to come and f come forward. Don't look for your interest. Look for a long-term investment. Thank you so much, Mr. Patnaik. Uh, we welcome Mr. Another Party, Secretary of uh, Thai Bhubaneswar, and he's a potential uh, investor. I just I'll I'll, wa I'll warn him. He's not a potential <laughs> investor. He is a full-time investor. He has invested in four, five companies already. A potential investor for the audience here. Yeah. <coughs> okay, I'll move on to Mr. Manish uh, Shivastav. He's the founding partner and director, Alpha Value Consulting. Uh, he's a seasoned professional and served clients nationally and internationally. He's a charter member of Thai. Alpha Value Consulting Private Limited is a transaction and fund advisory company with 15 years of uh, experience in valuation and transaction advisory domain. He's also acting as a mentor to the Atal Incubation Cell. Welcome, uh, sir. And I think he's the go-to man after this session. We should um, all meet him because he would be having the right uh, technical knowledge for how to go about your uh, navigating your uh, investment landscape as an investor or as a startup. Sir, your views, uh, and if anything, how do you look at Odisha as a startup space? Yeah, thank you, Sanuji, for the introduction. Uh, it is not only about, I would say, Odisha. It's overall, if you talk about India, India is so deep and so varied, and different geographies have different potentials. If you talk about Odisha, so much of the mining over here, so much of the fishery over here, so many of the things which are not available in different parts of the India, right? So every nooks and corner of India, there is a potential now. So now there being the time when people say, investors kaha milte hai? investors ko dhoorein kaha jake. So investors, everybody used to travel to metropolitan cities, ki Delhi, Bombay, waha pe jake milega investors. Now the situation is reverse. Now, now the investors are going to the tier two and tier three cities. And that is how the dynamics has changed. So the entire ecosystem has evolved and now if you even if you go to the deeper of India you will find a lot of the innovative ideas that being there and the investors are looking at to handhold into at the right time uh, be the part of that journey where they can create certain value proposition okay so I being uh, into the valuation domain from the last 18 years and uh, so somebody may say and ask, startup ki valuation kaise hoti hai? How you evaluate a startup? Very difficult to go. There's no uh, one cut solution to the question. I would say that this is the simplified version and you say that this is the value of the company. It is more about the perspective of the investor. For different investor, the value may be different. Everybody thinks that a startup has one single value, but it is more about like who may be the right investor for you. It is not only like for the investor who may be the right, right founder, but for the founder who may be the right investor as well. It is not only about the money that he is bringing, but the value chain he is building, but the type of the connection and the network that he is creating and building upon that will create more value chain in the time to come. Right. So always try to look at like uh, what is the value that I will be getting beside the funding side, okay? Uh, so uh, this is all. And uh, another perspective like uh, it is also dependent upon at which stage you are. And uh, 
where the economy is, what is the cycle is. Like suppose take example, I started a business in the year 2002 and the name of the business was ChandniChokBazaar.com. Chandni Chok is there in Delhi. And we thought about like we will uh, make the entire Chandni Chok go digital, All right? Uh, it's being a very passionate idea and it being very dear to us. We talked to the investors at that point of time. But what, what was missing in that? Two things that being missing. One is we are before time. Nowadays, people used to have the mobile and everything. Smartphones are there and you can look at. But at that point of time, 2002, there was no smartphone. So you have done something which was before time, right? And the important aspect is like there is a problem of scalability. Once you frame the name Chandni Chok Bajar, you cannot go outside of Chandni Chok Bajar, right? So there's a scalability issues. So from that time, when from the entrepreneur side, then to the consulting, and now as an investor, so a lot of the stages that being traveled. Uh, but one thing, one critical factor, I would say, sir, jitni bhi baar aapko log no bolein, aap kisi ki baat ko mano mat, kyunki har admi ka perspective alag hai. Aap jo chiz soch rahe ho, wo investor kabhi nahi soch payega. जब आप फिट होंगे तो इन्वेस्टर कहेगा यार मिस कर दिया इसमें इन्वेस्ट कर दिए होते तो इतना बिलियन डॉलर पैसा बन गया होता तो डोंट गो विद द थिंकिंग कि आप समझो कि आपको गट फीलिंग देखो मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट देखो देर इज नो आर्ट नो साइंस आपके अंदर गट फीलिंग है कि नहीं हम कर देंगे अगर वो गट फीलिंग है इफ़ यू हैव यू विल श्योरली सक्सीड एक चीज़ और देखो लाइफ में क्या है डे वन पे कभी भी बिजनेस मॉडल करेक्ट नहीं बनता है यू नीड टू प्रिवेंट इट आपको एक बार दो बार पांच बार दस बार आइटरेशन करना पड़ेगा वो वो इवॉल्व होगा टाइम के साथ डे वन पे आप सोचो मैं एकदम परफेक्ट बना दूंगा इन्वेस्टर को बताऊंगा और इन्वेस्टर पैसा डाल देगा इट विल नेवर गो दैट वे राइट तो आप समझो साइकी को समझो किस तरह से हमें करना है इन्वेस्टर और आपके बीच का जो गैप है उस गैप को ब्रिज करने की कोशिश करो कि उसके माइंड में क्या चलता है वो क्या देखना चाहता है दैट इज अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट इज बहुत सारे लोग नंबर्स पे बिलीव करते हैं कि यार नंबर्स या ट्रैक्शन क्रिएट कर देते हैं ट्रैक्शन क्रिएट कर देंगे तो हमें वैल्यूएशन मिल जाएगी और वैल्यूएशन मिलने से हमें फंडिंग मिल जाएगी ट्रैक्शन इज़ नॉट ओनली द थिंग आपको अपने थीम के ऊपर वर्क करना चाहिए वी नीड टू वर्क ऑन योर प्रोडक्ट अगर मेरा प्रोडक्ट अच्छा होगा इफ़ आई हैव अ स्ट्रॉन्ग प्रोडक्ट इट विल सेल नॉट इमीडिएटली नीड सेल हो सकता है बट मे बी इन लॉन्गर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम यू विल क्रिएट एन एंटरप्राइज ओके अगर आपका प्रोडक्ट अच्छा नहीं है तो क्या करना पड़ेगा डिस्काउंट देना पड़ेगा आपको ज़बरदस्ती जो है मार्केटिंग करनी पड़ेगी और उससे क्या होगा बर्नआउट होगा और बर्नआउट होने से क्या होगा लॉसेस बिल्ट होंगे लॉसेस बिल्ट होंगे तो ऑटोमेटिकली जो है वो आप एक ऐसे एरिना में पहुंच जाओगे जहाँ पर लगेगा बॉस अब क्या करें तो सुनने में बड़ा अच्छा लगता है एक यूनिकॉर्न है इंडिया में क्या सारे के सारे यूनिकॉर्न फंडामेंटली करेक्ट हैं यूनिकॉर्न एक टैग है वैल्यूएशन टैग है हो सकता हो 108 में 50 यूनिकॉर्न फंडामेंटली कभी भी प्रॉफिटेबल नहीं हो पाए दैट मे बी अगेन बींग अ क्वेश्चन मार्क राइट सो दिस ऑल द डायनेमिक्स दैट बींग देयर ओके थैंक यू सो मच मिस्टर मनीष श्रीवास्तव ऑफकोर्स वील ओपन द हाउस फॉर अ क्यू एंड डे बिकॉज दैट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बट दिज आर वेरी वेरी वैलिड पॉइंट्स एंड वी टच ऑन फंडामेंटल सो दैट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हियर वी हैव मैडम वंदना श्रीवास्तव एंड शी इज़ द डायरेक्टर ऑफ द एस टी पी आई गुवाहाटी एंड शी इज फ्रॉम द ईस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री एंड वेन वी टॉकिंग अबाउट टू टीयर थ्री टीयर सिटीज ऑफ इंडिया आई थिंक स्टार्टअप्स हैव गिवन अ होप टू द होल ऑफ इमर्जिंग इंडिया दैट like we have bollywood when we think of bollywood we only think of mumbai maybe entrepreneurship it we always think of bangalore i think the startup ecosystem is going to change that because of remote working i mean you can have an investor from any other place you can have a entrepreneur from a remote area could be a village so uh, looking at the insights of place like orissa these are emerging like assam and maybe the northeast uh, do you think 
it's a challenge or it's more of an opportunity when people from here may come up with more ideas like Mr. Manoj Mishra told in our welcome uh, inaugural event that it's actually when we we understand the local ecosystem we ca can come back with ideas which are actually more relevant than somebody sitting somewhere in the in a metro or the I mean top tier cities and thinking about what can happen in Bhubaneswar. So do you think it's an opportunity or we still have challenges in starting up in places like this? Hello. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the question and thank you very much for inviting me in this panel discussion. Um, very relevant question you have asked. Uh, we from STPI, we are an enabler. So basically, we are not investor, not a startup, but we are enabling, we are trying to, you know, catalyze the entire startup ecosystem. And uh, uh, as uh, we all know that uh, since past four years, we have, uh, um, we, the startup ecosystem has grown exponentially, uh, not only in terms of uh, growing startups, number of startups, but also angel investors. VC, uh, VC companies, and uh, then uh, government policies, initiatives, all those things have uh, resulted in, you know, uh, exponential growth uh, of the entire ecosystem. Um, uh, STPI uh, uh, is doing a lot of efforts uh, in this since past five years, we have uh, done a lot of, uh, we have taken a lot of initiatives and uh, we have, we are moving in an organized manner. You know, we have uh, created center of excellences, uh, 22 sectors, uh, center of excellences at present in various parts of the countries, including the remotest part of, uh, you see, uh, Arunachal Pradesh, Itanagar, you'll find a world-class laboratory. Uh, Gangtok, you'll find a lab uh, wherein you'll find uh, facilities uh, uh, like IoT controlled agriculture. There is a poly house we have made, displayed, and uh, we are also displaying how uh, this climate, uh, climate, water, humidity control can be done from the system downstairs in office. So all these things we have done. And not, not only that, uh, see, we are uh, trying to bridge the gap between uh, the um, uh, startups and the mentors. We have, we have brought a uh, lot of mentors on board with us. So uh, we are doing successfully mentorship programs wherein we are finding a lot of interest uh, from the um, startup side as well as from the mentor side. Uh, and uh, it, and not only that, see, in, uh, we are uh, largely focusing now on tier two and tier three cities. In Northeast, uh, if I give you an example, we have uh, launched our Octane program, which is, uh, which is providing cen uh, eight center of entrepreneurships in eight capital cities of Northeast states, all eight Northeast states. So in each of these uh, center of entrepreneurships, we have uh, developed uh, plug and play incubation spaces, and then we have on board mentors with us. We are also running challenge programs to select right startups. And uh, we are also trying, we would be doing in future a lot of networking events wherein we will bring investors also on board with us along with the startups. So uh, because we, as, as you said, uh, we are seeing this as an opportunity, as a big opportunity for smaller cities to grow because um, a lot of good ideas we are witnessing from uh, um, yeah, Assam, from, uh, even from the university students, college students, they are bringing new ideas. And uh, one unique prog uh, thing about our program is that we are uh, considering startups, even those who are at the stage of ideation. So when we are getting some good ideas, we are during the pitching uh, sessions. If we have some oh, some good idea from a very young, uh, say, graduating engineering student, we are selecting them, and we are uh, investing on them. We are providing funding supports to them. So all these things are uh, uh, creating a lot of. Uh, good results and we are finding lot many applications from northeast side 
lot many uh, you know um, even uh, enthusiastic uh, groups are coming uh, to us and discussing about our facilities and seeing these facilities so uh, in that way, I think that uh, th this is very important for us uh, to, um, you know, move on to tier two, tier three cities, and uh, um, a lot of, lot of not only STPI, but uh, I'm finding that the ed educational institutions, IITs, etc., they are also uh, doing a lot of such uh, initiatives. Uh, even in Guwahati, I'm finding that a lot many initiatives are taking place with respect to startup ecosystem. So, yes. I think yes, this is a great opportunity. Uh, th thank you, madam. Um, a place like Odessa, we have been part of the entrepreneurial journey uh, for so many years. Uh, we are looking for high network individuals that why would they not invest in startups amongst the other opportunities they have to uh, invest their money. But I have seen a huge trend in Bhubaneswar that people keep on buying jewelry, gold, <laughs> diamonds, and there's a huge <laughs> space in the jewelry space. Up at one point of time, I thought I could start something called Prelude Jewelry. We started an event company, and all around the our office space, we have jewelry shops now. So how do we manage to get these people with a lot of money to invest and to consume to get into startups? That's, again, a question mark for spaces like Odessa, where they are usually into the same things, uh, you know, investing in land, investing in real estate, and, of course, in things which they think have long-term value. So I think investing in entrepreneurs and startups could be a good way of uh, moving along. And only the startups and the ecosystem which we are creating have to show them that there is value. There is risk, of course, but there is value in it. We have uh, on my left, extreme left, uh, Nishita Baliar Singh, the director, uh, Feli Leo Ventures and Company, founder. She's a founder and CEO, Nexus Power. Nishita is a dynamic leader and a sustainability enthusiast. The brand Nexus manufactures rechargeable bio-organic and biodegradable batteries for electric vehicles. These eco-friendly batteries are lithium iron free and utilize crop residue as the raw material. So that's so interesting. Nishita completed her bachelor's in business management with marketing majors from Xavier School of Commerce, Bhubaneswar. Besides her entrepreneurial interests, Nishita is an amateur photographer and ad an adventure freak. She also takes keen interest in art, sketching, sports, music, and horse riding. She tries to build a greener planet. How eco-friendly is horse riding? <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> the first question. Then we can move <laughs> around your journey as an entrepreneur and trying to get uh, investors for your amazing uh, ventures. Is it working? Check. Yeah. I think it's working. It's just got Thank you, thank you so much for the question. And uh, so, I mean, I think uh, you're somebody who's seen me from school. So hearing such beautiful words from him really feels amazing today. Uh, as, as an entrepreneur, the journey, it's been a short journey, to be honest. It's been about four and a half years, almost about five. And uh, in this journey, if we've, we've seen a roller coaster ride, specifically from the domain we come from. So it's a very research and development oriented uh, space that we uh, belong to. So uh, it's very different from uh, D2C brands or B2C or even, in fact, B2B companies. A lot of businesses that we see today are uh, typically around uh, sales, and then that's how the channel flows. But as a company where we stand, it's a company where you would spend almost five, six years maybe in pure cash burn and uh, no really clear hope of revenues. And uh, so it's a space where you know you get up every morning with the hope that you will have some research in hand, something which will take you closer to the bigger goal, which is a biodegradable battery for us, but uh, maybe much many other goals for people uh, purely in the R&D space. So our uh, growth primarily starts from uh, self being bootstrapped, uh, one of the very important aspects for us, because it's very early to have an idea and to reach out to an investor with just an idea, because there is no product, there is uh, there are no test logs, there is no, no, no trials, nothing, so it's just typically on the paper. So reaching out at that stage, uh, very difficult. In fact, uh, no conviction as well. So the first step for us was to go bootstrap. And uh, a lot of family members uh, came handy at that point. And uh, from there, uh, we had to look at uh, investments because it's uh, difficult to sustain an R&D industry. Because there's no hope of uh, revenues coming in and there's no cycling happening there. It has to be pure cash burn. So the next step for us was to try and reach out to all of these government entities who had very recently announced their uh, 
grant programs back then, five years ago when I'm talking about. So a lot of uh, departments of the government of India, even government of Odisha, had launched a lot of grant programs, which uh, from the DST, Meeti, uh, also with the Department of Biotechnology. So multiple different grants, and that was the second way to keep sustaining. And over the years, that's what helped us build our product, have the conviction, do the test and trials. And post that is when we raised our uh, equity investment rounds uh, to be able to build further and then to have the traction enough to then do large scale trials and uh, piloting of the batteries. So that's uh, the journey that has been. I think a couple of things that I have uh, picked up purely from the funding aspect uh, throughout our journey is uh, it's, it's important to sustain the business. And uh, the idea around funding is supposed to be more about the business than the money itself. So it's, it's not about just uh, being able to have an investor on board. It is primarily more about the, the way you can keep your business running, whether it is your own funds, where uh, you have the faith enough that you can keep growing and eventually that will reap benefits. Or it is about the Government of India grants, uh, mm -hmm. Government of Odisha mm -hmm. grants, different state government grants, uh, private grants under CSR. So we also were fortunate to have a uh, HGFC Bank CSR initiative private grant. Uh, we primarily fell into the climate action category and that gave us the CSR benefit. So I think it's more important to explore uh, different avenues, try and understand uh, which ways the business can keep running, which ways the cash flow can keep happening if you are a pure uh, R&D company or if you are a, a company in the space where you are purely into cash bonds until you see some revenue next four or five years later. So it's more important to understand how the business can sustain and with minimum loss of equity. Uh, I would believe because it's a long race when you look at R&D it's a long race not only for the founders for the investors also for the entire team because everybody waking up in the morning coming into work on a product which will reap benefits three years later uh, the idea has to be very clear the vision has to be very clear and it's not something that will give you uh, you know a lot of happiness every day day in and day out where we've seen so many companies close uh, 10 crore deals in a day and so on and so forth but that's not something likely to happen with an R&D company. So uh, I think the vision has to be very clear, but in terms of funding primarily, I think it's very important that uh, we understand how it can sustain. It's more important to make sure that the funds keep flowing, whichever way, whichever amount, uh, the con that, that builds more conviction in fact, and at the same time allows you to be in the space where you're not worrying about cash flows and you're not worrying about shutting down a company. So it's not only about the equity investments, there are multiple more avenues, and it's more about sustaining the business and keeping it going. So you you also literally in the business of sustainability and environment. So when you approach a investor or somebody you're pitching to, do you look at the emotional part of it, somebody trying to do good to society, or you're also pitching in with some uh, value which you're giving for the money or the funds that the person is putting in? So that's a very good question, actually. And uh, that also brings me to a point that every investor has a different perspective. And uh, so it, it's important that from the entrepreneur side, we do a lot of background homework before we reach out to an investor. So for, for uh, a few investors, uh, I think sustainability stands as a premium. But for a lot of investors, that does not stand as a premium. The product features uh, would overpower the benefit of sustainability. So as our product, we look at the benefit that we could give to an investor that we want to reach out to, which uh, is both the sustainability as well as the benefits and the features that our product brings in with the sustainability aspect to it. Thank you so much. Before we move on to the audience and delegates here, I would one question to Satyakam since he has this amazing array of experiences as a person in corporate, as an as an startup uh, founder and an on investor. Uh, we have so many avenues of investment nowadays with uh, angel investment, uh, family and friends investing. Also, that's part of an angel investment. Private equity, institutional lenders. Somebody starting off with an idea, where would you advise? How does that person or the venture start off with? So I'm going to start off with what Nishita said, right? So you have to know when you want the money, right? You can't chase the money and then build the idea. You got to be very clear what you're building, how do you go about building it? And that uh, tells you what mix you should go with, right? If you look at uh, deep tech, um, uh, you know, anything with a long return cycle, right? Any, it's actually any IP development, any product platform centric business needs a slightly longer runway, right? Now, how do you go about it? So you s start with yourself. If it, is the, if it does not involve hardware, in your case would have involved hardware, um, then you may not, you could start with, and if you have the skills yourself, so imagine if you're building in SaaS, right? Build it yourself. 
um, you know, take it to a certain point, take it to a prototype stage. Then, you know, you have the choice of either going to doing a friends and family round or, you know, going to angels, right? Go to a VC, um, and again, I'll take a point that Ishida said, which is always think about your cap table, right? Which is your equity structure. Because the earlier you go to institutional investors, the more dilution you'll end up doing, right? So you want to get them into the picture um, later. And that goes back to, again, the journey you want to take. You may build a business that is a lifestyle business. What does that mean? It means that you will run the business at your own pace. Nothing wrong with it. But that's not a business that will, invest, that will attract an institutional investor. Neither should you chase one. But if you want to scale to a, uh, to a different level, if you look, have global ambitions, which means that the time you take, so the flip side of the argument is also that just because you want to hold your cap table together and you want to stretch your rupee or dollar, you will not take investment can also be a problem for you. Because you know every product, every idea has a shelf life. Just because it's in your head right now, doesn't mean 10 other people aren't thinking it. So, so you have to find that balance. But at the core of it, you have to say, look at what are you building? Who are you building it for? And um, you know, depending on where you are, you will take that decision. But you have to do your research. You don't talk to every investor. That's completely pointless. You'll waste your time, by the way. It takes significant amount of time and energy to talk to investors. So, uh, you know, so you have to do your homework. You have to do your research. Who will you go after? One thing that I want to talk about is um, debt. I, I think in India, we have a cultural antipathy to debt. It's like, how can we take debt, right? But uh, it's a great instrument. If you have a business that's in revenue, uh, debt's a great way to you know, um, uh, unlock value without dipping into your equity pool, right? So there are things that you have to be a little bit more aware about, which will happen. You're, don't start with those thinking on day one. Day one, just look at what you're solving, get that uh, done. And one other thing I do want to add, you know, and this is, you know, uh, Devu made this great point about local capital. And see, there's a chicken and egg thing, right? If you look at uh, Bhuvneshwar, imagine a VC sitting outside. They're like, you know, where is Bhuvneshwar? What is happening out there? I've not heard any big companies out there. I've not heard any investors out of there. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg. Now you have investors here, right? I've heard you know, from many uh, today, but they might be challenged by the fact that there, there's emerging technology that there may not be enough perspective about, right? That perspective might be sitting in Bombay or Bangalore or Pune. So one way is to say, is there a way to bring it both together? Can you create a co-investment model, right? Where you bring local capital, pull the local capital together, there's also an understanding of, of the, at least the founder mindset. Uh, you know, you can, that's, the, that's, a, that's a great asset the local capital can bring in. And then the, you know, the VC brings in the more global outlook uh, here. So that's one way to unlock you know, value. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a timer here which shows we have around six and a half minutes left. So any more takes from the panelists or we can just ask uh, our audience delegates to ask a few questions, please introduce yourself, raise your hand, introduce yourself shortly, and of course ask a question. We don't want any suggestions and advice from this side of the stage now. It's better to ask questions for the, whom you want to ask. Yes. Hmm. No questions, everybody is eager to go get into the pitching session as fast as possible, I think. Yes. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Prabhat Panda. I'm building for tourism. So my question to Debu sir is, because back in 2010 or 2012 around, you have invested to few startups in Odisha. So particularly, you know, we're looking on 2023 era. So are you looking to invest something on deep tech or looking something, you know, uh, purely having a physical, you know, kind of industry? What kind of investment you are looking to now uh, going to invest? Particularly on which kind of startups you are going to invest? If I talk about on 2023. See, the question is, what is the product that we are working on? You know, like right. Nishita's product. So it is not diptych alone. 
it can be anything it can be a service my got it got uh, sector also like right. i know your product right sir so <clears throat> one has to be very open and honestly speaking let me tell you very clearly one thing as an investor personally i look beyond the product i look at the uh, passion of the founder you know how long has he been sustaining it and how long has he been developing it you know it can't be just an idea and you come and get an investment i think that's a great suggestion how you are how long you are sustaining actually how long yeah. you have been sustaining it i see these girls um dishita and uh, her sister in fact uh, for the house they are twin sisters and both of them i see the other one sitting there so both of them are the co-founders of the company so and i i see them working on it in the ecosystem for the last four years at least if i am not wrong so that kind of commitment and passion is what we look i look as an investor in a startup got it thank got you. it thank you thank you so much any questions we got i think now 10 minutes so we are working like a hybrid model as we move downhill we getting more mileage i think so. hello uh i can't particularly you know yeah, yeah, yeah. please yeah, hi. hi this is minushri from thinkra innovative solutions private limited so uh, sir the question is before all of you so you know like when we are pitching out to an investor all they are talking about is valuation so sir we got the funding one year back so that was a valuation figure so now you know whenever we are going the valuation is changing because every day one new traction is coming in so sir how soon we should be doing going for this valuation so like you know and it's an expensive affair because you know the the concerned persons are charging a hefty amount for doing the valuation so we are not in a position to do it again and again so it should be like you know is there any parameter that the investor should be taking up or we need a you know proper valuation certificate that this is what is there so yeah okay thank you uh. i already told you about this there is nothing like a fixed number i would say that this is the right value this is the wrong value uh, the question is like where we are what is the stage because valuation every day, you talk rightly valuation every day it will change because the new traction comes the value will change so more important is like instead of going back and forth on the valuation just look into like what is my runway is 18 months mein kitna paisa chahiye what is my ask is मैं कितना पा जाऊंगा कि मैं इसको इतना स्केल कर पाऊंगा इफ यू हैव दिस थिंग राइट देन ऑटोमेटिकली नहीं तो वो कंफ्यूजन बना रहेगा हमेशा यू मीट वन गाय यू मीट अनदर गाय यू मीट वन इन्वेस्टर नेक्स्ट इन्वेस्टर एवरी टाइम देर इज अ कंफ्यूजन दैट विल कम राइट सो दैट इज ऑल वॉट इज द रन वे दैट यू आर लुकिंग एट एटीन मंथ्स का आपके पास बजट है कि नहीं इन ऑर्डर टू स्केल इट और किस लेवल पर उसको लेके जाना चाहते हैं ठीक है दैट इज ऑल thank you thank I, you manish i'll just add a couple of things to that okay yeah, yeah. one if you have an investor who's asking for a valuation certificate is not the right investor skip that investor okay because <laughs> the investor you. has to put a value to you themselves yeah. yeah okay that is one but most in most serious terms um see your when you are beyond a certain stage when you're in a growth stage you know let's say series a and beyond there is a certain dynamic depending on the space you are there is a certain dynamic you know everybody knows what numbers you'll settle at the challenge happens typically at earlier stages when you are in idea when you're in pre seed when you're in seed when you're in pre seed this is where the challenge happens the challenge you're talking about right yeah. and you know one you can't put a number to it uh, it's difficult that's so true. you know you heard the suggestion that's exactly how you should do it so the view point you should go in with at that stage this now i'm purely talking about idea pre seed kind of stage you should think about how much money you need right which is what he said you translate that back to saying how much dilution are you willing to give and have a range in your head i want to dilute 10 to 15% why because i will have to do subsequent x number of rounds yes if i do more than this i can't handle those rounds and you have to go back and tell the investor the bigger picture why there's an x sort of a uh, you know you are looking at 
this is the money you need to get to that x and this is how much you're willing to part yeah thank you I'll, i'll just add on to that in fact i was coming to the fact of doing the equity dilution now but just one thing on the registered valuation thing you know there are different methods of valuation that the registered valuers follow and uh, most of these negotiation before the term sheet of the deal actually closes and the shareholder agreement is signed they don't need the registered value to give their report it's more an understanding between the investor and the founder and it's more internal to the uh, founder as to where they look at their valuation at post the negotiation is where the registered valuer comes in where you have documents i mean so it's more like if you have a finance team on board if they are looking into the finances day in and day out if they are tracking the your revenue and expenses then they should fairly be able to give you a valuation of the company in terms of different ways i mean they can be a discounted cash flow which is far more detailed but there are uh, different methods of a future valuation or maybe just a revenue projection growth of x value of my revenue as on today so say for example if per month i am making about 15 20 lakhs of a revenue for example i could say consider my valuation and i'm expecting to grow uh, say 3x uh, month on month i could expect a valuation anywhere 10x or 20x from there and then take that figure as a value figure so there are different ways of valuing it depends on where you believe you are comfortable as a founder and typically linking it to uh, the amount of money you want to raise and how comfortable you will be to uh, the amount of equity you want to dilute and that typically gives you a figure i mean it's uh, it's not like every day revenue flow in and every day you need a registered value to do it for you it's more internal where you can build your conviction yourself sure thank you thanks sir and uh, do we have more time because it's stuck at 10 minutes uh, right now one last question from the delegates uh, audience y yes uh, we, we got two questions okay two people so okay, uh, ladies first of course Hi, my name is Sunita, and uh, we are a Bhuneshwar-based startup. Uh, <coughs> uh, we cater to on-demand delivery. We have a fully grown product. Uh, my question is like, uh, like uh, someone said, the idea is not in only our head. I mean, there are multiple others who is having the same idea and sol solving the same problem. So you have a lot of competitors in the market. Look, like, how do you pitch in your, uh, like, how do you pitch into the investors to invest in your product when you have so many competitors? in the market for solving the same problem i can i can take a stab at it so here is the thing I, if you if there are multiple competitive products why are you building another do you know the answer to that i mean you are solving a problem right like the But idea you said there are five other competitors right which means they're also solving that problem and some of them might be ahead of you as well yeah. right so why are you doing it because there is a need in the market we know that there is But a market there are five other guys solving it why are you adding being becoming the sixth one there are i mean there are if you see the market there are a lot of restaurants but still new ones are popping up every now and then in the market so okay okay so here is the thing that's not a good enough answer okay because what will happen is you will find five restaurants you will find 50 restaurants because there are maybe 5 million restaurants uh, out there mm -hmm. so you'll find the first 50 first 100 then you will struggle because those five people are probably thinking how they will be the best amongst those five they are thinking competitive differentiation right and the competitive differentiation could be in product it could be in commercial structure it could be uh, in experience there are many different ways there are different ways to build a competitive model right absolutely so you know so you uh, the target segment right so there are many different things you have to pick how will you defend what you're building if you don't know that right you may not appear like a problem right now but 6 months down the line you will hit a a, a roadblock okay okay understand once you answer that question that's your answer to the investor okay, okay. understand uh, yes Thank we had another just question just adding to that just adding to that so uh yeah so uh, rightly said by uh, sir that uh, it's the differentiation that you need to look at it's the moat that you need to built upon like jo aapke moat ko koi easily copy na kar paaye jaise aap kehte ho ki main suppose restaurant chala raha hu restaurant kfc kahin par bhi kholta hai macd kahin par bhi kholta hai every macd and every kfc is a hit case why so kyunki unko koi copy nahi kar pata hai they have a certain usp feature तो हमें जब तक वो नहीं ढूंढ पाएंगे तब तक हम डिफ्रेंसीशन नहीं क्रिएट कर पाएंगे 
और वो डिफ्रेंसीशन जब आप क्रिएट कर लोगे देख लोगे कि ये हम कैसे डिफरेंट हैं मे बी डिफरेंट थिंग्स दैट गोज इन टू इट बिल्डिंग अपॉन इट कस्टमर की रीच कैसे है उसको हम कैसे मैसमराइजिंग इम्पैक्ट दे पा रहे हैं क्या चीज़ दे पा रहे हैं दैट विल क्रिएट मोर वैल्यू तो वो मोड जब तक नहीं क्रिएट होगा तब तक वो वैल्यू को आप नहीं अनलॉक कर पाएगा थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वन लास्ट शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन विद शॉर्ट आंसर हेलो एवरी वन गुड आफ्टरनून वन एंड ऑल आई एम सितांशु मिश्रा द फाउंडर ऑफ जॉब स्कूल फॉर एवरी वन इन्फॉर्मेशन वी हैव रिसीव स्मॉल सीट फंड फ्रॉम कॉन्टैक्ट इट सेल्फ फ्रॉम थ्रू एस टी पी आई माई क्वेश्चन टू देवू सर इज in fact uh, you mentioned rightly about the passion uh, of the founding team but apart from passion uh, whether the investors also focus on profitability value proposition or valuation so that it will be helpful for all my fellow entrepreneurs to, uh, you know when they pitch they can uh, focus on those points see those factors are always there like talking about uh, profitability we would definitely look into that any investor will look into that and he will also look at how secured is his investment va aage chal ke paisa bachega ya nikal jayega ya doob jayega that is the kind of attitude the investor has but other than the passion the other thing that probably excites an investor is the scalability ye this product is it restricted to bhubaneswar or this product is only restricted to shahid nagar or this product can sell all all through all you know fall around odisha or maybe i can take it international so de depending on the scalability scalability is a major factor also for consideration of Uh, the investor and uh, that was your question if i am not wrong right sir yeah but coming back to this lady i i'll supplement uh, and take one minute see when we are talking about uh, similar products you have to look for a you have to look for a niche where you are the exclusive service provider now you were you are mentioning about restaurants and i belong to that community you know my business is restaurants and uh, hotels there is one uh, allow me this 2 minutes time sir there is one restaurant in uh, bombay which is completely manned by people who are who cannot speak physically challenged deserved but that has become their usp people go there for that there is a restaurant in japan which is famous for wrong orders because the order takers are elderly people and they always be sub with uh, orders like you ask for a dal makhani they will probably come back to you with a manchao soup and that is the usp of that restaurant sir it's a wrong order restaurant so you have to look for that exclusivity to sell your product amongst 500 or 1000 uh, restaurants thank you thank you sir thank you so much i think the most niche restaurant where you don't serve food at all the healthiest restaurant <laughs> <laughs> just watch food being made and sent in <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. The panelists have been so wonderful. Our questions have been great, and the best part: a big hand for the organizing team for sticking to time. I mean, almost, and we have been doing it so well since morning. And I think we started in a wonderful way post lunch. Next is the pitching session. Over to Pasana. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, panelists. I think wonderful, and the most exciting thing that we heard from this panel was that in this so-called funding winter, there is a lot of money available. All you need to go is. Uh, sort of demonstrate your road map demonstrate your def defensibility and it's all sitting there so thank you so much panelists and yeah so we will now request uh, uh, the moderator here uh, uh, to uh, please uh, give a token of uh, our appreciation a small memento to all the panelists uh, we can begin again from that side uh, we will begin with nishita 
Thank you very much, Nishita. Thank you so much, Satyakam. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Patnaik. Thanks, Manish. Thanks for making time all the way. And thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Shrivastu. Uh, all the way from Guwahati, thank you very much. Uh, I would now request uh, Mr. Sushil Sethi, Deputy Director, STPI, to please uh, give a memento to uh, Mr. Sanurat. Thank you, Sanu. Excellent moderation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, all the panelists. Folks, we now come on to the next uh, and the most exciting part of this day, which is the pitching session. We have actually uh, all these exciting startups that have been shortlisted over the last uh, 10 days or so will be pitching here today. Uh, I would request the folks sitting in the front round table row, I mean, I'm sorry about it, but we will have to vacate it for the jury. Uh, may, I, will, I will invite uh, the jury members here and request them to please be seated on the front round table rows. I will have my colleagues uh, give out uh, the score sheets for all of you. Uh, I will, I will, as I, I will call out the names so that we can be seated, and then we will also explain the the format as well as the uh, sort of uh, pattern of scoring. I'll request uh, Miss Shrivastav, uh, Director STPI Guwahati, to please uh, join us as jury. Anywhere, ma'am, wherever you wish, on the front uh, row. Uh, Amit, my colleague here, uh, ma'am, you might like to take the round table. It's easier to score. Uh, Mr. Shurjo Patnaik, uh, Director STPI Bhubaneswar. Supriya Dhanda, Co-Founder and Managing Partner, Wiser. Aninda Padi, uh, Secretary, uh, Tai Bhubaneswar. Manish Srivastha, Founding Partner and Director, Alpha Value Consulting. That's Anuda Padi, uh, Secretary Tai Bhubaneswar. Mr. Debu Patnaik, uh, founder and MD, uh, rather, member Bhubaneswar Angels. Kumar Saurabh, Kumar, are you, uh, yeah. Kumar Saurabh, uh, Venture Catalyst. Nikhil VS, Pontac Ventures. I think Nikhil is missing here. Yeah, right. Uh, we have uh, Pradeep Gupta. Uh, who will be joining us. He is uh, board member at Delhi NCR and of course uh, the, yes, 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 yeah, yes, that's okay. Anywhere on the round tables, yeah. Abhay, Dr. Abhay Badani, uh, Joint Director, STPI. I think we have somebody else from STPI also who will be joining us. Right, okay. Uh, Mr. Amareshwar Kumar Rai, Additional Director, STPI. Please join us, sir. Any of the round tables over there, it's convenient to score. Amit will be giving you the scoring sheets. So on the format, this is going to be a pitching session for, uh, uh, and, and we have shared with you a list of founders. That is the order in which they will be pitching. Each founder will get five minutes to pitch. This thing has to, okay. This thing has to change. The back door. Each founder will get five minutes to pitch. Uh, we have a counter here, and this is for the founders. You may want to note this. We have a timer here. Please keep an eye on that. Otherwise, I'm sure you would have prepared your five-minute speech. Uh, just before the five minutes, we will give you an indicator. Uh, please stick to the five minutes, and you've already heard about what all the investors want to know. Try to stick to that, uh, because we will have very few questions. We've allocated about four to five minutes for question and answers. Uh, it'll be good to be able to pack as much information as you want to share in those five minutes so that the investors and the jury members here have the full information to score you. Uh, I'm sure this has been intimated to you and informed, but I will quickly share the criteria uh, on which the founders are going to get scored. Uh, this is for the reference of, again, all the uh, founders who are pitching as well as the jury members, and they have, uh, of course, the score sheet with them. 
uh, we'll be talking about the problem you're solving and obviously when you're talking about the problem you're solving, you're talking about uh, the, the company goal, the target market, etc. Uh, and of course, uh, the key differentiator within the problem that you're solving there. Uh, you'll be looking at market potential, which would probably uh, obviously include TAM and within that TAM, how you plan to scale and how you plan to address the real need. Uh, competitive advantage, I think that's a question that we just answered a while ago. What is your differentiator? What's your mode? What's your defensibility? Uh, then, of course, the team, uh, the diversification of the team, experience of the team, uh, what, what, uh, how, how you plan to execute vis-a-vis -vis the team. Uh, then there is, of course, the key element, which is potential to scale. Um, very, very important when it comes to finding VC investment, uh, and that you have to be able to demonstrate on the pitch. Uh, Financial understanding, this is a sort of well, well realistically defined financial model uh, that needs to be uh, sort of demonstrated here. Uh, and of course, uh, be asking for money, therefore you should be able to give traction and milestones to the investors and the jury here. And of course, uh, yeah, good to touch upon uh, the compliance and the regulatory part as well. So, uh, so, we, will, so we will be inviting uh, founders, I hope uh, people are ready, Amit. Amit, is your first, your presenters are ready? Sure. Right. Okay. Yeah, everybody will be scoring. So, yeah, makes sense. And similarly, questions, etc. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. In case any of you are involved in any of these companies, it may make sense to leave the questions to others uh, so that, because you understand the company anyway, so it makes sense to leave those questions to others and uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, self sort of certify that here is a company I'm, I'm, I'm mentoring or I'm invested in or advising, so I will refrain. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, PG. I think that is the benefit that we as Thai Delhi have, that we've got such wonderful uh, people in our membership and board that we keep getting advice on the go. Thank you so much, so shall we begin? People ready? Okay. Okay, so I will actually step down and I will just uh, regulate from here. And what about these people's mics? Okay. So the first company. So chair at one. Okay, just we'll just stop for five minutes. Uh, can we please get off, get these chairs off the stage? Quickly, yeah, to just push them back, maybe. Otherwise, they can't see the presentation. From the venue, folks, can anybody help us remove the chairs, please? 